Can you build an entire data pipeline in less huh? than 30 seconds? Let's just go and add an MCP server into Cursor. All I have to do, drop this little bit of JSON snippet in here that's pointing to our remote server, enable the MCP server, everything going good, tools should be loaded, should see a green light. Yes, generate pi Airbyte pipeline, that's our tool that we wanna use. Now let's go to the chat with a small prompt, I'm creating a data pipeline from Postgres to Snowflake and letting the Pi Airbyte MCP generate my entire code for me, as well as complete instructions for setting up environment variables and configuration parameters to use the Airbyte connectors. MCP servers are an amazing way to boost productivity as a developer. They come in all different styles, whether it's executing a service or API on your behalf, and returning those results into something like Claude Desktop or ChatGPT, or as an extension to your favorite IDE like Cursor or Klein. Now, a few months back, I was experimenting with creating an MCP server to generate data pipelines using Pi Airbyte. This was a local server that required a few steps to set up, but now with the broader support of streamable HTTP, I thought it was time to deploy it as a remote server. Now in the Pi Airbyte MCP server example, there's three primary aspects to the server implementation. The first one is a file storage. Now I'm using OpenAI's file store to do this. And what I'm doing is I'm providing contextual information to the server. So when it makes an LLM call to generate that Pi Airbyte connector code, it has all of the right relevant contextual information on how to create best practice Pi Airbyte code. Now you'll see here I'm loading in a few things, Pi Airbyte's quick start guide, some API docs, even some authentication connectors if it needs to create some authentication code, and some demo applications that we've created previously so it sees the best practice code. Now you'll also see what I'm doing here is I'm loading in Airbyte's connector catalog. Now this is the important thing. What it's doing is it's providing all of the source and destination configuration parameters that Airbyte has in its connector catalog. That means when the code is generated by my MCP server, it knows the correct configuration for each of those connectors. So when it generates the app, all you have to do is add in your own configuration values and settings. And last, but most importantly, the implementation of the MCP server. So I'm inside uh, VS Code here with a client as an extension. You'll see here at the top, I have some docs, and these are the docs that I actually imported into the vector store before. So you're looking at now the uh, Airbyte connectors JSON, just an example here of what it looks like. And what we do with the, the vector search is we actually look inside this properties element and look for all the properties and attributes that are provided. And then the implementation itself is a Python file. So I jump into my main Python file, and probably the most important thing here is where we actually do the query to go to OpenAI as well as the vector search. So I have this query file search here, and you'll see down here, I'm providing it instructions of what I want the agent to do. So it's an expert in the Airbyte connectors and Pi Airbyte. It knows how to get relevant information and connected details. And then we're using GPT-4 as the model, also taking advantage of OpenAI's file search. So again, this is where we're looking for that vector store that contains all of our connector information that we created. Up to that, we run the query, return the results. Now in order for it to be available with inside a MCP server, I also need to create a tools element. So you'll see here I have this generate Pi Airbyte pipeline. It's using the MCP tool decoration, and that's how it gets exposed to agents and clients like uh, client and cursor. So at this point, we're all pretty done. Let's go over and start running our application ourselves. The last thing that you need to do to use the MCP server is configure your client tool. Now in this instance, I'm using a remote server and I'm gonna connect it to cursor. So we're inside cursor here, just a sample project. I'm gonna click on cursor settings, then tools and integration, add a custom MCP server and drop in just a little snippet. Now this is a remote server that's running on this URL deployed on Heroku. And this is really important here. The environment key here is where I'm adding my open API key that will actually perform that um, chat completion query that I showed you in code before. 
Now this is where it gets really tricky with inside MCP and the implementation right now. This environment variable is not supported on all clients. So for instance, I use Klein a lot. Klein currently doesn't support passing in of environment variables for a remote server. So unfortunately, in this instance, I'm just gonna support cursor, but there's a million developers already using cursor, so not necessarily a bad thing. What you'll need to do is add your own API key, save that, drop it back, and then you'll instantly see that if everything is working correctly, you'll have one tool enabled. In this instance, generate Pi Airbyte pipeline. This is the same tool that we saw just before. Now it's time to put it into practice. So I'm gonna create a new context here and I'm gonna say create data pipeline from, let's say, source Postgres to destination Databricks. I'm gonna go off and run. If it's the first time you're running it in the context, you'll be prompted to run the tool. So after a little bit of time, you'll see a little tick to see that the MCP server has responded. Right now, the performance is a little bit slow. We're gonna to have to try and optimize that vector search a little bit. The connected JSON that we provide in there is about 12 or 13 meg of data. So it takes a little bit of time, but once it comes back, it's gone and created everything that we need to create our endpoint, including source, the environment variables, as well as some great setup instructions and script. So I'm gonna go accept those changes. And let's have a look at what's created. So I chose a Postgres database for the source and a destination for Databricks. You can see all the configurations that are required by an Airbyte connector. And then I have an Airbyte application here written in Python, runs, provides all the source and destination information and connectors and runs the stream. So everything is looking great. Let's do one more example. The great thing about MCP is it's a tool with inside the chain or the context of the chat window that you have. So I'm back inside cursor here and let's this time, let's say create a data pipeline from source faker to a data frame. A data frames very popular with inside obviously Python coding. What I'm gonna do is then I wanna take the results of that data frame and visualize them. So I'm gonna visualize the results in a bar chart using Streamlit. Streamlit's a very popular uh, development framework and a really great way to visualize data. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this MCP call, it's gonna go create that uh, pipeline for me between uh, Faker and DataFrame and then take those results and visualize them in Streamlit. So I'm chaining these two things together all with inside one chat context. Great value of an MCP. So I'm gonna kick that off and run it again. So my execution's completed on the MCP server. And you'll see my code is being generated. It's gone and created the pipeline already, the requirements it's required and now creating the Streamlit app for me as well. So if we have a quick look here, this pipeline should look pretty similar. It's gonna fetch all the information, scroll down to the bottom, read the streams, convert the streams to a data frame, and then make them available. And then what we have here is a very simple CSV visualization that will take that pipeline that's being created. It's gonna pull those from the data frame. In this instance, it's gone and generated a CSV file for me to read and I'm good to go. So let's follow the instructions here. We'll do a quick pip install. My requirements. Okay, and all I need to do is run my pipeline. pipeline is now run perfectly. Then all I have to do is do streamlit and streamlit app. And now what we can see is the results come back. Not a very great bar chart, but it's definitely something that I can work with. Pretty impressive for just an MCP chaining the response and getting everything back. Obviously I need a little bit of work with the, the UI, but 
It's got me a long way very, very quickly. So there you have it. We now have our remote Pi Airbyte MCP server. You can create a data pipeline between any of the 600 plus uh, source and destination connectors that we provide in the registry. Plug it straight into your IDE, such as cursor. We'll look at client coming later on as it supports in, uh, environment variables to make that easier for you. This should also work inside Claude code. I haven't tried it yet, so if anyone wants to give it a go, just let me know. But you can also see some of the advantages of MCPs. I can chain these tools together and use a chat prompt like I did to create the Streamlit application, albeit with a little bit of uh, configuration that I'll need to fix at the end for the visualization and pull all of those things together in a really amazing AI-driven workflow for data engineering. I hope you enjoyed that one. See you on the next one.